It's music that can make you move your feet. It's music that connects a culture here in Idaho and thousands of miles away. So I grew up with that music around. I grew up with the food. I grew up with the language. And a Boise-based Basque musician just received a major national honor because of his dedication to it, to Basque dancing, to Basque food. Uh, it's a strange feeling because I don't, I don't really, um, I don't, I don't see myself as receiving the type, you know, the receiving awards. It's a huge award, and it's recognizing you know, national, national treasures. He received the 2019 National Heritage Fellowship. We have to have uh, a Basque culture that's alive, and that means it changes. And he's dedicated much of his life to performing and preserving these key components of Basque culture. Musician, mentor, teacher, entrepreneur, and now 2019 National Heritage Fellowship recipient, Dan Ansadegui, ahead on Viewpoint. From Idaho's News Channel 7, this is Viewpoint. Welcome to Viewpoint. I'm Doug Petcash. National Heritage Fellowships are the highest honor bestowed on folk and traditional artists in the United States. Boise's own Dan Ansadegui is one of only nine recipients in 2019. We'll talk with Dan in just a second, and later he's going to play his button accordion for us. But first, listen to this. <laughs> Dan was nominated for the National Heritage Fellowship by the Idaho Commission on the Arts and the Basque community, both here in the Treasure Valley and in the Basque country. The Director of Folk and Traditional Arts for the Idaho Commission on the Arts says, through his music, dance, food, and language, Dan maintains a critical connection to the European Basque community. Dan's success has been to take time-honored traditions, adapt them, and make them relevant to generations of Basques who have always called this country home. And Governor Brad Little congratulated Dan on the honor as well. He said Idaho is extremely proud of Dan and Sadegi for earning national recognition for his role in keeping the Basque culture alive in Idaho and the region. The story of the Basque people is part of Idaho's story, and we are grateful that Dan has chosen to direct his artistic and musical talents in this way. My guest today is a recipient of the 2019 National Heritage Fellowship, Boise-based Basque musician Dan Ansadegui. Dan, congratulations and thanks for being here today. Thank you very much, Doug, and thanks for asking me. So, what does it mean to you to have received this honor, the National Heritage Fellowship? To me, it's really an honor for the community. Um, I haven't done anything in the years that I've been playing music and teaching music and, and you know, my projects with food, with the restaurants and such. I haven't done anything without a lot of help from, from other people, from my family, from, uh, from a lot of people there on the Basque block, um, uh, with the fellow musicians that I, I, I kind of keep dragging into new projects. And, and, and so to me, it's a recognition of that. I think we have a, a really vibrant mm -hmm. Basque community here, uh, people from around the United States, especially the western part of the states uh, that also have Basque clubs, always kind of uh, notice what's happening in Boise. And, and so we're just, we're just in a really uh, a sweet spot here where we're kind of in, in that generation, that, that third and fourth generation that really, that really find their culture important again. And Does receiving an honor like this help um, in your mission, in a sense, of raising the profile? maybe helping to get the word out about the, um, the richness of the Basque music and the culture? I think it does. I, I don't really look at it as a, as a mission for me. It's never been um, a goal of mine to promote Basque culture or to, uh, it's, it's not something anyway consciously that I do. It's just something that, that we've always grown up with. In our family, we always had mm -hmm. music around us um, with my dad and with uh, Jimmy Gisero, um, and. Uh, that band and and uh, joining you know being being a dancer from a young age at, it's, I think six six years old we started dancing and you, that's with the Owenkati dancers no right? that was with uh, the the young group uh, okay. that was taught by uh, um, uh, the, the by uh, Jay Ormachea um, uh, and Ann Boyd uh, mm -hmm. taught us as as young children and then the Owenkati's 
uh, are are more of a, a, a young adult group. Okay. Uh, so you join Owen Cuddy's at 14, mm -hmm. and and it's just one of those things that many people progress one into the other. Uh, so what is your first memory uh, as a child, maybe of, of of like really you know enjoying or getting into the the Basque music and and you know picking up an instrument perhaps or dancing. Well, I remember um, uh, I remember. Uh, hearing my dad, listening to my dad play the, the large piano accordion. And it was something that he played quite a lot when he was young. Uh, he and Jimmy DeSero and a couple of other people kind of were the accordion guys that would go around and play different parts of the, of the, the Northwest. And uh, so he would, he would bring it out at the house once in a while when we had family dinners or we had friends over and he would bring it out and play. And I remember that uh, as, a, as a very young young kid. Um, at some point, and I really don't know what, how old I was, but I remember our family would go and my dad would be playing drums then with Jimmy Gisero and, um, and uh, the family would want to go back to the hotel because sometimes those dances went pretty late down in Nevada and, and uh, they would just, I would sit up there on, on, the, on the bandstand just behind my dad's drums and, and they'd kind of make a little pillow for me out of coats and cover <laughs> me up and I'd fall asleep uh, to that. Wow. And so, so I kind of remember uh, always having music around. What a and great dance. memory! Yeah, it was it, it, it was something, and I think it's just uh, it was it was always there. It was always a, a part of. Do, me. do you think that having that feeling, you know, and remembering that and having that so fondly is part of your heart and your your memory is is part of the reason why you like to to share that creativity, that talent with others by teaching the accordion and and working with the dance groups to maybe help others find that same joy? Yeah, I think that might be, might definitely be a part of it. Uh, 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 teaching accordion came about because my sister Gina Arkiti and our friend Anna Mendiola saw an, an accordion group that came over from, uh, from the Basque Country in 2000 for that, the high LD of that year. And this was a, a group that played here in Boise and they said, we can do this. Jimmy Gisero was still playing accordion, but they said, you know, this guy's not gonna wanna play forever and we need to do something here in Boise. And so the two of those ladies, neither of whom play an, a musical instrument, um, put together Chan Chan Gorriak, our little button accordion group, and, uh, and asked me to teach the, the button accordion. Uh, and so, so that, again, that was somebody else's idea and I just kind of jumped on board and, and was able to um, put together a method for the group. Uh, because I didn't know of any methods at the time. I'd mm -hmm. kind of learned a little bit with a, with a friend of mine and, and then had mostly taught myself. And you didn't even pick it up until you said 1990 when we talked on the yeah, phone Yeah, I was earlier. in my 30s when I, I think I was 30 when I started to play uh, the button accordion. I'd fallen in love with it uh, at a younger age and I remember stories from my dad because when he was, um, when he was a, a sheep herder uh, in, his, in his youth, he uh, um, took a button accordion up uh, to the hills with him, and so he would, you know, he he, remembering songs, or they they'd kind of uh, once in a while one sheep herder would would be kind of close to the other one, and they'd kind of camp or have dinner together or something mm -hmm. like that. And um, he said the old guys, the bass guys, would always have, uh, uh, they would always be singing songs, and yeah. say he, and then he would learn those songs on the button accordion. And you actually have a booklet here that you developed as far as a method that you use to teach others the instrument? Yeah, this was um, uh, what we did when, when Anna and Gina came to me and, and, and asked me to teach. I thought, well, I can't really teach without a you method. Hold it up just a little bit higher for a second. There you go. Okay. I, I can't really teach without a method. And so, and so I kind of put this, this book together and we, um, we put together, I, I formed uh, uh, a, a method with uh, numbering the buttons, and so the kids actually wrote um, uh, on their on the buttons, wrote the number of the button, and then and so we did a simple the uh, a number of the button mm -hmm. was going in on the accordion, and if it's underlined, it was going out, and okay. so we worked on songs learning it this way, and then later on we brought notation into and it. And that's part of the reason uh, that you were honored and with the uh, fellowship by putting together this method as well right. that can be The fellowship shared. is a, kind of a three-prong um, thing. It's partly on uh, uh, music, and that would be playing and, and teaching music, um, and I think the dance is pulled into that as well. Um, uh, so I guess the, the, that's two of them. There's the music part of it, and then there's teaching, whether I was, when I was a director with the Wayne Cuddy's uh, uh, and teaching, 
um, the dance, dance. Uh, and then later on uh, teaching music, um, playing music with bands like Amuma Says No and uh, Galpasa and Ordago and the Jimmy Gisero Orchestra uh, was the second uh, facet, and the last one was Foodways. Um, having opening Bargarnica in the Basque Market, uh, being now a part of uh, the Chiquiteo family, and and uh, and also at the Basque Market, we started to uh, teach, uh, teach there, cooking right? classes. Yeah. yeah, and I got to teach one semester a cooking class at Boise State, which was really phenomenal. I should have worked the yeah. cooking segment into this show. There we I, go. I think yeah, I yeah. should have done that today. <laughs> um, Dan, why do you think it's so important to um, evolve with time? Uh, you you had said you know, earlier at, at the beginning of the show, I used that uh, clip from you saying that Basque culture is alive and therefore it changes. And that's kind of how you look at the music too, like with what you play with Amuma Says No, with your originals, you work in Basque and English lyrics, but you also work in some of the old styles with newer stuff. Definitely, we, um, uh, you know, to me, I've, I've never been really a big fan of, of just preserving something for, per, per, for, for the sake of that. Mm -hmm. um, to me, that's just a copy of a copy and eventually it gets worse and worse. Um, we have to live it and, uh, and, and so our, our food is alive. Our food isn't, isn't exactly the way that I was taught maybe uh, as a young person. It's like, well, how do, we, how do we adapt this and how do we use this today? And what, what are the essentials of the food or the music um, that we can take and then and then see how that uh, affects us today. I remember sitting down at the very beginning when it was uh, Sean Ockett, Jill Aldapi and I sat down with uh, Spencer Martin, uh, the drummer for Amuma Says No, and our idea was that we would have the three of us playing music in a traditional way and we would have a back line a, uh, or have our, uh, a drummer, a bass player and a guitar player who could play with anybody in town and didn't have to be Basque. Uh, and definitely didn't come from a Basque tradition of music so that they could look at that. We could play something for them and, and say, what do you hear? And that's how Amuma Says No was much different than any of the it really groups. is a fusion. It definitely, yeah. it, and that was, it was intentional from the very beginning and it's what made us different than what, what had been going on uh, with the other groups I'd been involved in. Well, I've, I've heard you play several times and it's definitely worth um, seeing the band and I, I want to ask you uh, with the fellowship you will get to go to Washington DC in a couple of months I believe what does that entail that you'll be doing there we'll we will go and we'll have uh, the presentation and a banquet uh, on one evening uh, the next day we'll kind of get ready for the for the performance and the performance involves the nine recipients of the fellowship uh, I think four are musicians and um, there are other people there's a crow storyteller uh, there's a saddle maker. There are different kinds of um, arts that are involved in it. And, uh, and I'll get to go back uh, with a small group. Um, and my daughter and my niece and my nephew will dance. And so we put together a 10-minute ten, ten performance. Nice. And I get to go back with Chris Beter and Sean Ockett, um, who have been involved one or the other or both have been involved in every musical project I've ever uh, been involved in. And uh, then uh, um, uh, Oliver Thompson is a, a violin player who, who uh, I played in the, the band The Moody Jews with. And, and I just am really excited about the way he, uh, the way he understands uh, my, the Basque minor mm -hmm. tunes and, and the, the, um, the harmonies that he can add to that. And so that'll be the four of us. We'll go back with the three dancers and we'll have a 10 minute show uh, there in Washington, D.C. That sounds like it's going to be a great time. Should be fun. Yeah, be. Well, up next, though, um, Dan is actually going to share some of his music with us. He brought his button accordion with him. We'll talk about the music and the instrument itself when we come back. Celebrate your freedom in style during the extended July 4th sale at Furniture Row. Get huge discounts on every sofa, every dining table, and every bed. Plus, four years no interest. Hurry, the extended July 4th sale at Furniture Row ends soon. Wednesday. This is going to be different this time. In a good way? For us? Ellen's Game of Games is back. Let's go! To literally kick your... Ellen's Game of Games, Wednesday on NBC. The Salvation Army's Booth Marianne Pritchett School is dedicated to building futures for teen parents who want to continue their education. With over 96 years of evolving to fit the needs of our community, we are still here for you offering a wide variety of programs to help teen moms and dads on the road to success. So crazy that we've all made it here. Are you proud of yourself? Yes. School starts August 19th. Enroll today and build your future at the Booth Marianne Pritchett School.
It's almost here. The newest, easiest, must-have app for everything Idaho news and news weather. 10, we From begin. breaking news to hyper-local weather alerts. Forecast for tonight, a red flag warning. That the all-new KTVB app coming soon to the App Store. Celebrate the freedom of a great night's sleep during the extended July 4th sale at Denver Mattress. Save up to $500 on the cooling comfort of a temper breeze. Or check out the Summit Queen, only $189.99 plus four years no interest. Hurry, the extended July 4th sale at Denver Mattress ends soon. And welcome back to Viewpoint. My guest today is a recipient of the 2019 National Heritage Fellowship, Boise-based Basque musician Dan Ansadegui. And Dan, this is really cool, and it's going to be a special treat today. Dan's going to play for us in a little bit. But first, I'm kind of fascinated by the instrument that you have um, you know, brought to the people of the Boise area and, and others, and that is the button accordion. Why is it called that, and why is it different than what people may know as a classic accordion? The basics of this accordion is a harmonica. <clears throat> and the basic of a piano accordion is a, or the base of it is a, is a piano. So I were really, unless I played piano, I couldn't play a piano accordion. And unless somebody played harmonica, they couldn't switch over from that one to this one. Um, this, this is set up so that each row in the accordion is in a key. And uh, so we have the regular scale. And each button has two notes, one going in and one going out. From the next button, then out. Why do you like playing this? Uh, you know, I fell in, I, I, I remember hearing stories of my dad when he, he played the piano accordion later on in life. Uh, but as a young man, he played the button accordion. And I remember hearing those stories and I really, I really enjoyed <clears throat> thinking of him up at the sheep camp, you know, a young teenager and being up, up there with the, uh, the sheep and the dogs and really just him and his accordion and that was it. And uh, it was just kind of a romantic, even though it wasn't romantic at all for him. Hard work, uh, was. yeah. And then I got to go over uh, my second trip to the Basque Country. I, I ran across some old guys that were playing. And at that time, the button accordion was dying out. In the, and this was like 1982. And the Basque, uh, the Basque button accordion was dying out. And in 84, they started uh, up with a contest with the button accordion. And that really revived things. That's Some cool. young people started playing. And, uh, and at the same time, I, I just kind of re fell in love with the instrument again. And even though I was uh, 30 when I started to play, I um, was able to pick it up OK. And, and well, would you do us the honor of, of playing some music. Sure. This is a Biribilqueta that I wrote uh, for, kind of for my daughter uh, that uh, um, was trying to help her to figure out how to play the bass along with the right hand and it, this kind of developed out of that. <laughs> You said that was an original, but you also play some of the traditional and, and classic Basque music as well, correct? Sure, yeah, and, and, and that's developed out of, that's mm -hmm. what's called, a, 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 it's a march or a bidibilqueta, and it just has that, that dump, ba dump, ba dump rhythm to it. And so how would you <clears throat> describe Basque music? Uh, to me, Basque music is is very very social. Uh, it's uh, especially with the with the button accordion, it almost always accompanies dance, and uh, um, uh, and and other the older Basque instruments are the same, uh, the chistu, the chirula, the different kinds of uh, the alboca. The different instruments were very seldom used just in concert form. They are almost always used to accompany dancers, and uh, to me, they kind of go hand in hand. You really need. Uh, you can't have one without the other. And Jimmy Gisero did a fantastic job of that, always saying, um, you know, and as he played accordion, my dad played tambourine for him for all those years. And he always said, dancers need live music. And so he really worked hard. And he was the first um, Idahoan who won the, the fellowship yeah. uh, back in 1985. And I got to go back as part of the dancers and perform carrying on the him. tradition. It was yeah. great fun. And, uh, but Jimmy always did that. And he played for the club, Bass Club in Mountain Home in Ontario in in Caldwell and Homedale and of course here in Boise and uh, just kind of went wherever he was needed uh, mm -hmm. and and because he understood that the music 
without the dancers uh, is, is really a different kind of a thing. So is it about community gatherings? Um, does, does it tell a certain type of story or is it like many genres of music where it can talk about everyday life, it can talk about love, it can talk about loss? Yeah, one of the things, the jota, that we always dance to always has a, uh, um, a, a verse to it. And the verse is it usually is very simple and it's about everyday kind of thing. It can be about it can be about loss, it can be kind of melancholy, and they often use minor keys for that. I love the minor um, keys. Me stuff, yeah. too. I'm, and, uh, uh, and, and sometimes it's very happy and just talking about, <clears throat> about dancing or about, you know, the sky or whatever. So you have um, probably mixed audiences when you're performing, both Basque and non-Basque audiences. Do you hope that each gets the same thing out of a performance by one of your bands or uh, something different? Do you think about that at all? Not really sure. I think, I think it usually is they get something different. And I think what happens is they bring in their own history. Uh, they, we often hear stories about uh, somebody who is Croatian and, they, and this brings back memories of their grandmother who, <laughs> who did this or yeah. that, or they're Italian or they're, you know, they're, but there's some other yeah. culture and yet what we're doing uh, is is touching them in some way yeah. that that uh, that really resonates uh, with their family or with within their 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 history. And does it give you joy to be able to share this thing that's sure. so important to you with others who may not have heard it before? Yeah, of course. I, I um, uh, my the hardest part for me obviously is pr is practicing. I just to sit in a room and just and just practice. You you kind of have to get to a point where you're kind of with a friend and you're just kind of hanging out with your friend. Um, and ignoring our dog in the in the next room who, <laughs> who tries to sing along, um, either out of pleasure or pain, and uh, uh, and and so that that's the time I really need to set aside. Uh, performing is easy. I do kind of like to kind of head to the back of the stage a little bit more and and uh, uh, let let Jill or somebody else take the front, but. Um, but otherwise. Well, it's beautiful. We have about a minute left in this segment, and then we'll have a little bit more after the break, but will you play us into the commercial break, sure. please? It's Alive After Five. Experience it each Wednesday, Boise's favorite free summer concert series. Come together for a celebration of community and great live music. Go to downtownboise.org. Downtown Boise is Alive After Five. Summer. There's just too much to do for the 12 weeks we get, right? So take advantage. Jump in a new Toyota RAV4 and get out and play. The all-new RAV4 has multi-terrain select and available 8-inch touchscreen. Plus, you get Toyota Safety Sense 2.0 standard. Choose gas or hybrid and get a great low-payment lease for a worry-free summer. It's the summer event, and it's going on right now at your local Toyota dealer. Toyota, let's go places. Not running. Why am I not running? Because the DQ Summer Blizzard menu is only here for a few more weeks. With seven great flavors, like new Sour Patch Kids. That's right, Sour Patch Kids. And brownie dough. Plus, way more amazing summer-filled flavors, all blended in a sweet DQ soft serve. It's the ultimate summer treat, and I'm trying them all. Mmm, summer. Not running. DQ, happy tastes good. What do you think happened? Tonight, a seven exclusive. He vanished four years ago. I just want my boy. The search goes on and the suspicion. The worst nightmare a parent could ever go through. Can you understand why some people in the public well, might sure. think that you are guilty? Sunday, a News Channel 7 exclusive. They're talking to us about the mystery that started right here. News at 10 tonight, only on Idaho's News Channel 7. It's Alive After Five. Experience it each Wednesday, Boise's favorite free summer concert series. Come together for a celebration of community and great live music. Go to downtownboise.org. Downtown Boise is Alive After Five. 
And welcome back one more time. We're with 2019 National Heritage Fellowship recipient Dan Ansadegui of Boise. Dan's a Basque musician who's been teaching and passing on the, the uh, traditions as well and a big part of the reason why he was uh, able to receive that honor. And um, Dan, if people here in the area haven't seen you or your bands perform, how can they see you? How can they find out about where your performances will be? Well, Amuma says no, uh, who, with whom I've been playing in the last 10 years. Uh, we uh, we kind of took a little bit of a break. Um, the uh, 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 people in the band all kind of had uh, little projects they were working on. However, we're, we're going to be playing uh, first Thursdays uh, at the Basque Center uh, beginning in August. And uh, so we'll be down there. We'll play the Sheepherders Ball next Christmas time in the, at the Bass Center. And uh, then we'll play for High Aldi in 2020 as it comes okay. around next summer. Um, the Calimocho Cowboys, uh, group, the, another group that I get to play with, uh, um, will be playing Sunday night of uh, San Ignacio, which is the Basque Festival here in Boise on the 28th of July. Uh, and our button accordion group, Chan Chan Goriak, the group that I teach, will be playing Saturday the 27th on the Basque block for the festival and also Sunday night uh, before the dance. You have a lot going on. Sure. Yeah, I get bored. <laughs> I take big naps if I don't stay that, busy. And play with different bands like that. But Dan, I, I just want to say congratulations to you. It's been Thank fascinating you, to learn a little bit more about um, what you do and, and just to get to know you a little bit. So congratulations. Thank you for being here today. I appreciate it. appreciate it. So that is all of our time, basically. But I'm going to step aside one more time and let Dan play us out to the end of the show. I'll see you tomorrow in today's morning news. Dan, thank you again. If you would do the honors thank again, you, sir, Dan. please. Sure. Thank <laughs> you.